what is up guys today I'm going to show you an easy way to remove your brake rotors and your brake drums that clock keeps ticking like a metronome and my thoughts keep telling me to get me home but my balls keep telling me to let me oh oh just let me oh that clock keeps ticking like a metronome and my thoughts keep telling me to get me home but my balls keep telling me to let me oh oh just let me oh that clock keeps ticking like a metronome and my thoughts keep telling me to get me home but my balls keep telling me to let me oh fuck all that shit just welcome back to a brand new video guys so this is the first video of my tech tip series as mentioned in this video i'm going to show you a quick and easy way to remove your brake drums and your brake rotors all using this or these let's get into it Now I just want to mention that these are not Snap-on brands. I thought it would just be cool to throw a little sticker on there. I know, it's cheesy. It's whatever though. It's my style. So anyways, what you're going to need is, you're going to need two size bolts. You're going to need 8x30 and 10x30. Okay, these are them here. You're going to need two of each. Now some of you might already know about this and some of you may not. So this video is for the people that do not know about this. Now the guys that don't know are like, Bruce, why would I need two bolts or four bolts to take off brake drums and brake rotors? Well it's simple. Have you ever looked at your brake drums and brake rotors and wondered why there's two threaded holes in each one? Now some have these and some do not. But if you look carefully at your brake drums and your brake rotors, uh, not always so much the drums, but the motor, uh, excuse me, the rotors most of the time have these threaded holes. Now, what you do is you take either, your, for the most part on your cars, you're going to use the 8x30s, okay? And then for your trucks, sometimes they're usually 10x30s, could be the 8x30s. I've only ran into the 8x30s and 10x30s, that's all I've needed. So what you do is, once you remove your caliper and your caliper bracket, what I like to do is, I like to hit the face of the rotor. Don't hit the braking surface of the rotor. Hit the area around the lugs without hitting the lugs because you can damage the threads on the lugs. Give that a couple hard whacks. Now, 90% of the time, giving the face of the rotor a few hard, hard whacks will pop the rotor free. Okay, but now every now and again we know we have that rusted rotor or that rusted drum that just doesn't want to come off. So this is where these bolts come into play. After you give it a few whacks with the, with the hammer and you can't get it free, you see that it's stuck, you take these bolts, you thread one in each hole, and then I like to use a 3 8 impact gun. You can use a half inch gun, but it's kind of overkill and you got to be careful. Not so much on the rotors, you don't have to really worry about those, but on the drums, you must, you must make sure you de-adjust your drum brakes before performing this procedure. If you do not, you will rip the springs right out of the backing plates, okay? Or maybe even something worse. You have to make sure, with the drums you have to be careful. Even if they're de-adjusted, if you have too big of a lip, on the drum itself on the inside from it being worn and you go ahead and pull these off you could do some damage to your spring kit your hardware kit so you have to keep in mind to be very careful of that no holds barred in the front on the front uh, rotors you can go ahead and jimmy at those all day long just be careful you don't if, if they're stuck on there that bad then you're gonna probably strip off the threads so you want to be careful for that this works and it works a lot I've only run into a few times where it hasn't worked but me I'm ruthless on the rotors I get a nice big hammer a ball peen and I whack the face of that rotor and normally it pops off again do not hit the braking surface if you plan on reusing these rotors because you will mar the rotors up and that's never good you don't want to uh, you don't want to alter the rotor in any way, shape, or form because that's where your brakes make contact and stop your vehicle. Uh, brakes are very important, so you don't want to do any damage to them. This is a very handy trick, and 
You know, again, a lot of you might know this, and this is for the people that don't. We've all had those times where those rotors are stuck, we can't get them off, and this is a very simple, easy solution. So remember, you're gonna need two eight by 30s and two 10 by 30s. There might be other sizes, and if there are that you guys know about, then go ahead and you know post your, your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Uh, there are pullers and stuff you can use for this procedure, but why when you can spend five bucks on four bolts and you know pop them right out it's great also another thing you can do to help aid this is if you ever notice you have space in between your rotor and the lugs okay you can spray some blaster in there and what that'll do is that blaster will seep behind the rotor and uh, help break that free because what's happening here is the rotor is rusting and kind of fusing itself to the hub this is why it's very important whenever you do a brake job or whenever you take the rotors off you want to clean the face the surface of the hub with uh, a cookie disc and then spray it with white lithium grease before you reinstall your rotor this will ensure that the next time you go to do this job if it's in a decent time frame uh, you won't have these issues. It might be slightly stuck, but a couple taps, maybe even a bang with your palm, you could probably get it right off. Normally, they don't stick too bad after that. But, you know, you'll get people that do a brake job and don't clean the surface of the hub. You know, I started doing this not too long ago. I learned the importance of cleaning the hub, and it does. It makes a big difference. Uh, just think, if it were you that got stuck doing the last, you know, someone a brake job after someone else did it, and they didn't do this procedure, it would suck because you're the one that has to fight with the rotors and everything. So keep that in mind. When you do a job, keep the next person in mind because you never know that next person might actually be you. And then you have to take them off and fight with them. So always keep that in mind. It's good to go ahead and do things the right way so that the next technician or if the next technician is you, it makes your job a little bit more easy. So I hope this video helped you guys. Uh, I hope you learned something, and again, if any of you guys have your own suggestions or comments, leave them down below so everyone can view them. So stay tuned for the next video, and uh, you might learn something.